Right, it's Project Now. Joining me this evening is Martin Costello. Um, we were due to meet up um, <laughs> with this old uh, Chinese virus that's out there. Uh, <laughs> we're doing... Don't be mine. How you doing, Martin? All right? Yeah, not too well, thanks. Obviously in lockdown at the moment, so um don't know what to do with myself a lot of the time, actually. So um, it's getting a bit boring now, I think. But, you know... <laughs> Like I said, we've been all hit by this Chinese virus and, um, um, you know, we've just got to bunk, hunker down and just get on with it, I suppose. It's crazy, man. I, I've been having a few internet problems because everyone's at home using the internet. Mm. So it's been a bit, uh, you know, a bit, bit of a lot. Doesn't matter. Um, just hope this video comes out all right, connection-wise. So in this video, we're going to talk about... Um, Make it great again. So we've got, as I said, we've got Martin Costello with me. He's the uh, former deputy leader of the uh, movement, um, and we're just going to find out what happened. Is it uh, slowly disappeared? So, um, first of all, Martin, I just want to ask you um, before before I start the video, I should actually say um, I did contact Luke Nash Jones, who's the uh, leader and founder of uh, Make Brain Great Again. Um, he did message me back. Um, the response to um, joining in on this video uh, was a little bit long-winded, um, but I'll leave it at that and just say that he's basically declined um, to join us, which is a shame because I would love to add him on, get you two talking again and whatnot. Um, I was generally hoping he would have gone for that, but sadly um, he's declined. So, Martin, um, we'll have to just hear your side of the story of, you know, how things kind of came about and disappeared and whatnot. So um, how did you first get involved? Did um, you it pretty great again? Yeah, I mean, it was um, it was an interesting start, really. Um, um, basically, in my hometown of Swindon, um, it's quite odd, actually, how we first uh, um, met up, but... Um, the local lefties in Swindon had this um, refugee march, which they actually hold it every year, or they have done, um, obviously welcoming refugees. And I thought, you know, at the moment, this is back in 2017, um, Brexit was all flying all over the place and it was a complete mess. Well, I thought, well, if they can have a march, then surely we can have one too. Um, so I basically set up in my hometown of Swindon the first ever, um, well, the Brexit march um, to um, get um, all local Brexiteers together um, to um, obviously um, show our disapproval of the way the Brexit negotiations have been handled. And then it was quite interesting because you know, I set this um, event up and then suddenly I had, other, I had different people coming to me ask me, who have you got speaking? Well, it never really occurred to me before because I'd never organised like a rally or anything. And so you're yeah. like, oh, who do you need speakers? So I had different um, people offering to do this. Um, and I thought, well, we need um, other maybe experienced people. So um, my brother actually um, did some research um, and he came across this video um, of, a, of a chap speaking outside parliament for the People's Charter was, was at the time. And little known to us, that person was um, Luke Nash Jones. Um, we were very impressed um, with um, the way he spoke, and um, and he seemed to have similar values. Um, so we invited Luke to speak, and you know he was absolutely uh, delighted when um, he came down. So we first met um, at this rally in Swindon uh, back in um, September 2017, and uh, and then things took off from there really. So you said you went about setting this up yourself um, and then uh, you've invited him to speak. And then and then what, how, did it, how did it happen? And did he then say to you, you know, I've, I've got this movement I'm starting up or I've got this, because, you know, how did it come about? Because originally I think it was like a news thing. I remember seeing videos, mm. of him, like you said, of him speaking outside Parliament. Um, I remember seeing some videos of him online tearing the arsehole out of lefties. He was asking them mm. questions. Just didn't know the answers to. They didn't know why they were protesting. They didn't know mm -hmm. what what it was all about. Um, some fantastic videos. So was that what he was doing at the time, or was Make Britain Great a, a thing by then? Or yeah, well, see, I wasn't really. I didn't even wasn't aware of this content. I mean, I've seen some of the work he had done, and you know, I was really impressed by it. And um, it was something really, I guess. And um, we got off, got on really well um, um, at this at this initial. Um, 
rally and um we we start to uh, get in contact more then we had the same values um you know and he's clearly um he knew what he was doing he's excellent at what he did um and um it just sparked off in there really he was a really sorry to touch i was saying he must he's a really good marketer you know from mm. the way he made uh you know the way he developed the movement um the way it moved on his promotions and, and whatnot and the way he interacted mm. with people Done a great job. Done a fantastic job. Um, you gotta give credit where credit's due. Absolutely. Um, there was a team of us in, eventually that worked all together. I mean, because there's no way you could just run something like that on your own. You need a team of people, you know. Um, but thankfully, people stepped up to the mark and they assisted as well. Um, so I guess we all played our part in pushing that. But yeah, Luke was um, Luke. Um, you know, he, he led that and um, he done an excellent job at it as well. So you had your Facebook um, page, I remember um, mm. you did some videos on there, it was called The Right Stuff, mm. uh, and then it was The Red Pill Factory or something, you, mm. you, you were doing that, was that once once a week you are doing, talking about? It was, latest, mm, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, um, it started off, um, yeah, we, um, once a week on a Thursday, a Thursday evening, and we'd try and stick to a certain time slot. It would be broadcast on like Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, even Twitter as well, you know, and um, it started to grow from there, really. People were sharing it, and we had, we was getting good people on as well to interview. Um, yourself, I think you were on there at one point, weren't you, David? You came on, and um, yeah. yeah. And um, it really, it really struck a chord with the Patriot Peter of Britain. Um, I mean, we we kind of formed it around that Trump movement of make America great again. Um, you know, because we generally wanted to make Britain great again. Mm. And um, you know, we just tried to um, to engage with the people who'd come, and um, they loved it. And it just, it just really took off really quickly. Like the Facebook page just exploded. You know, people were joining it. Um, I don't know if Facebook like that or not, but other issues come along with that. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, um, I, I remember so I, I remember Luke um, doing a video which I was involved with um, over in Lambeth. Mm. It was um, a video on a response to I think uh, Henry Bolton, who just taken yeah. over as a UKIP leader and whatnot. Um, and then he turned out his girlfriend had made racist comments. So there was a, um, a mm, bit of a I don't know, media that if you remember, I don't remember, but I met, I met, met him around that time. Um, I remember him showing me his, uh, his, his page. He was introducing himself, saying blah, blah, blah. Um, mm. and they've been great again. He was like, I've got 55,000 followers on Facebook. Mm. Um, I remember like, wow. And I was like, I've got a Brexit Tears page. <laughs> I've got 85,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was like, right, you know, looking, speaking, but I understand the hard work it takes to, you know, to, to build up. And we yes. clicked on well. Um, like I said, I, I, I don't, um, I, I don't have any problem with him. Um, but like I said, the message he sent was very long-winded um, with regards to somebody who I met working um, in in my working environment, who's an activist, um, who's fallen out with with Luke. Um, yeah, they've had a fallout. Basically, uh, yeah, he just he just basically, I think because of that, he doesn't want to doesn't want to know, which is a shame. Because I think the other bloke doesn't want to know me because of Luke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Revival of them, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. dude, that's how I mean for me when I met Luke, I thought, yeah, you know, that's uh, great. And then we we met each other um, a bit further down the line, um, oh. and he did the. Trump rally, pro Trump rally. So the lefties were doing uh, <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump blimp. <laughs> they they had organised, they raised, I don't know, fifty odd thousand pounds or something stupid like that, wasn't it? They raised all this bloody money, man. So many people must have chipped in for it. Um, they they got this this blimp, um, which has now been stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Bay Stadium, wasn't it? The lady from who ran against Anna Selbury in Nottingham in the last general election. Um, she she decided to pop it for a birthday present. Face Stadium, I think. Face Stadium. Uh, yeah. 
Um, yeah, so then, you know, you did the, well, we did a few uh, events, didn't you? I saw mm -hmm. there was quite a rallies. We saw each other, we did some joint ventures trying to get people down to Parliament um, yeah. to protest for Brexit. And then the big one came when they had this, this protest, anti-Trump uh, protest. You guys then <laughs> decided, right, you're going to do uh, a pro-Trump rally <laughs> <laughs> right in London, in Vauxhall, outside uh, the American embassy. And I get this call with this, um, this uh, Luke, and he's saying, look, would you be interested in speaking? Blah, blah, blah. So I was a bit sceptical at first. I was like, mm, I don't know, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, and it wasn't a bad turnout. It was right, quite organised. I mean, you had quite a, a turnout from the media there, didn't you? I mean, uh, a lot of planning went into that beforehand because you can't just rock up to these things you know we'd, we'd plan this you need to plan these sort of events like two or three months in advance you know and um it is one thing trying to get people there by invitation but you know mm -hmm. we had to hire a lorry out we had a lorry driver yeah. on our team who actually drove it um and all these other bits and pieces just get planning from the police you know all this you have phone calls with them there's so much involved in what just seems like like a rally. But we just thought it's really important to do because, you know, Donald Trump had not been long elected. Um, and um, he I thought, well, we both um, like Luke and I, you know, we, we got we do share all the similar values. And we thought Trump was great and he deserved, you know, um, to be welcomed to our country. So I thought it's so disrespectful that these lefties um trying to stop you know the the elected president of the united states you know make him feel unwelcome i thought that was disgusting and that was a new low so luke and myself got together we thought this this will be great and um like you said um it wasn't a bad turnout um on the day um and it also coincided with the um obviously the um i think in outside whitehall where there was another big protest going on the man whose name you can't mention. The man whose name you can't mention because initially our our um our yes, event was the same funny. time as that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So we had to bring ours forward um to accommodate that. So it was it was an amazing period, um, that, that hot summer in July. Um and um hopefully we did make Phil Donald feel welcome as well, you know. We're not all bad lefties. So incredible stuff. We had a, you had um, some speakers there, didn't you, from an Australian uh, party. I can't remember the name of the party, um, what her name is. Yeah, um, is it Avi Yemi as well? Avi Yemi, he was there, um, Avi Yemeni's um, speaking alongside her. Um, then he went on to speak at the uh, the TRA down at uh, Whitehall. Yes. Um, yeah. I remember Luke um, tearing the BBC a new one. Uh, he was talking to him about the uh, white privilege and mm. uh, their, the way they advertise their jobs in a Bain background only. Yes. Um, and it was like, you know, it doesn't affect you. Duh, 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 duh. Luke was like, well, it does, because even if I wanted to apply for it, I couldn't. Um, yeah. then the fact, like, I mean, you can look up online. It was, um, he's quite articulate, Luke. And... Um, he was. It's interesting you actually mentioned the BBC being there that day, actually, because there's a certain lady there who was well, or I didn't know who she was at the time, but someone called Stacey Dooley, who um who does these documentaries. And I think she was on Strictly Come Dancing or something after, or whatever it is. But she was there interviewing us. And, and like Luke and myself were wired up the whole time with their like recording equipment. You know, they were there waiting for us to say something racist or something. But, you know, we're not like that and they had nothing on us. And it's really disappointing because when I saw this documentary they made after, the only bit, because it was the documentary was titled something like, you know, it's Lefty BBC, Is Donald Welcome? And of course, they show all the anti-Trump stuff and to try and make it even, they showed a small segment from our rally. And it was when I said, round up all illegal immigrants and get them out of here. And I, you know, they they use that to make me look like some, you know, far right racist. But what's wrong with that statement? What is wrong with that? They shouldn't be here. They're criminals. They're illegal. That's that's the that's the first word there. Illegal. Exactly. Um, so it's just upholding the law. So you know, um, yeah, it's just yeah. So, you're right. Yeah, so she lost the respect. 
Yeah. But, but do you know what, Martin? I think after that, I think that's when, um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's when Make Britain Great Again really exploded onto the scene then. Mm. Uh, huge amount of following, literally like overnight. Mm. You had an extra 150,000 followers on, on mm. social media. Um, you're in all the newspapers. You guys had your, your placards, people holding them. I mean, I mean, how long did it take to put stuff like that together? I mean, you turn up with thousands. <laughs> it's of got it. Yeah. I was walking home steaming drunk, and I see all these placards everywhere, people holding them. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> A lot of work must have went into that. It was. I mean, because um, I remember, like, um, you had all these placards. We had, like, say, a couple of hundred of them. Um, we'd be making the night before, but like I'd have to go down to B and Q to buy all like the poles, um, like three meter poles or something, these wooden poles. And then so would one of us be there trying to cut all the poles up, and then someone else would be trying to staple all the signs on there to like to make them. And we're doing this like at God knows what time before like the rally the next day, then loading them all up into the lorry and bringing it down. Um, so it, it just takes, you know, you need an army of people to do these things. And of course, when you don't have it, you just got to do it yourself. Well, but... I remember the police stopping people from carrying the placard. So where you had, um, you guys had your uh, your rally in a um, box outside the US Embassy. As you mentioned, there was another one going on in Whitehall. I don't know if you remember, but they stopped people from carrying um, any of the placards, um, made Britain great again, placards to and from uh, the other rally they had to hold mm -hmm. them down or whatever and yeah. you couldn't work you couldn't walk in more than uh, groups of two or three or something or the police would disperse you and um, exactly. give you a didn't they try they tried to block it as well the the event they tried they, to stop they, it they were telling people at the tube station the met police that it was cancelled it, it was this way it's that way they were stopping people from going and that was you know that really opened my eyes to what we were dealing with they yeah. they really didn't want people there and I, I'm not stupid. We know that because um, um, even Make Britain Great Again page, they purged it for about two months. Like you said, we had over 100,000 people on there. Facebook purged it without any reason whatsoever so we can promote our events, you know. <laughs> um, but obviously Luke had like the website as well and things um, to have back. Um, so we'd be able to contact people that way. But it just shows the lengths that the um, the, the, the establishment had gone to really, to close all these things down. And like I said, they wouldn't let, let people bring their banners or anything because apparently, you know, oh, yeah, we're the far right, horrible people. But the, they seem to let the left get away whatever they want, though. And they're the ones causing the the, the trouble all the time. And once again, like I say, the, the, that rally that, that you mentioned that day later on, the he you can't be mentioned, the only all they show is in the papers and things is like um, just the handful of idiots causing trouble. And God knows they're probably paid to go in there to cause trouble. The majority of people are decent, patriotic people, and they were just there for support. You know, but it's disgusting the way they close these things down. Well, again, just touch on the media side of things because you've got a lot of exposure. Um, mm. A lot of free advertisement and free publicity mm. um, from all the newspapers and all the journalists that were there were taking photographs, like I said, or there's all these placards mm. um, at the other event, um, which were your placards as well. Um, you know, there was obviously there was a, a flash protest with um, when TR got sent to, to prison um, yes. the following day, um, and you guys were speaking with um, Gerard Batten and whatnot. So. The, the the movement really really grew it was um oh, literally like overnight it grew like so fast it was unbelievable um, i remember seeing like um promo girls like down, down at the protest you had like hot girls wearing baseball caps um and i was to um <laughs> that's the ones yeah <laughs> uh, so then baseball caps were everywhere you know they were getting out i remember um luke's talking about them saying we're going to get these done and and you guys really, you know, he was a great marker. You have to, you have to hand to him. Oh, I mean, yeah. you guys really well as a team pushed this. Um, and it, I just remember it was just, just everywhere. Overnight, just absolutely blew up. I mean, even Nigel Farage, I remember seeing Nigel Farage um, on LBC. He posted on um, his Facebook um, in April um, 2018 of himself wearing. <laughs> 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 Great again, baseball cap. I mean, you, you couldn't make it up. Yeah. Um, 
it, it was, was all going we didn't, we didn't know he was actually going to, he was going to put it actually take a picture so he was quite delighted by that it, it meant a lot to us really because obviously he shared the same values as us and uh, we did want to make britain great again so you know we thanked him for um for um for for, for, to, for taking that on really it was very kind of him Right, it was um, like I said, almost open light. It was um, huge, and as as quick as as quick as it blew up, mm. um, it came back down. Um, mm. It was all going so well. It was going so swimmingly well. Um, like I said, I remember talking with Daniel Bass of Bostock at um, we said earlier at, at one of the rallies, and I remember looking around mm. and behind him. Like people with all the baseball caps on, um, <laughs> make break again, make break again, and pack something. They were just fucking everywhere, man. And then mm. and from this giant movement, um, people get involved there to overnight being basically destroyed um, mm. from the book drop incident. So mm. that certainly did things. Well, things. We, we'd done a protest that day actually um our first um because i thought well look we're in london anyway so let's just make the most of this because as you know luke myself um live outside but so we thought let's do a double whammy um let's because we've we've been doing protests against the bbc and their bias um, for a long time and people know my displeasure of the bbc but um at that period as well we'd had our facebook page purged by um facebook so I thought, well, where's the Facebook headquarter then? So have a look at the map. Wow, it's only about a 10, 15 minute walk from um, from the BBC. And oh, we all right. like a good march, don't we? So um, what we planned to do was um, start our protests at the Facebook headquarters and then march round to the BBC. Um, as per usual, though, our event was suppressed. So very few people turned up. Um, which was fine, but we we made our our way to the BBC, and did our speeches there. Are you are you reaching out to people at this time? And so, if your Facebook um has been purged, you know you, you mm. can't reach out via Facebook anymore because they knew. I remember they nuked the account for quite a while, didn't they? Oh, they did. So, so how, how are you connecting with people? Is this just through through YouTube now? Is it just through the well, website? We had, we had um yeah massive following on youtube as well i didn't really appreciate how big it was at the time um so um we made videos to promote it on there um yeah, it was it was um, um a good um a good turnout we went to the bbc everyone went fine as usual uh, we did our speeches there um lovely hot summer's day um and that was job done um but then a few people um well well, as we normally do, we go to we like to socialise with um with our our support after. So we went to the pub. Um, and then what the normal plan would be is go home. But then somebody there, yeah, um, all I'll say is third party people suggested that we should um um go around and um make a video at the um this bookshop. I've never heard of this bookshop before, but apparently it's a socialist bookshop or something. Communist, yeah, communist, communist, yeah, bookmarks, apparently, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'd seen some of the books some online that they were selling, they absolutely appalled me, they really did. But mm -hmm. you know, I thought, well, I mean, some of us wanted to go home, but we were, I suppose, um, talked into it. So the plan was basically, um, Luke and um, another member of MBGA was going to go in and like have you know what luke does when he destroys people which he's really good at he's going to go in there and then just like destroy the sh shop owner um and then after a few of us were supposed to go in in like for a laugh go trump 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 with our banners and like just walk out and that was the end of the video <coughs> excuse me end of the video but obviously there were people there who we didn't know um and then um I guess they had had one or two bites in the pub, and then they took it too far. You didn't know who they were, Martin. You didn't know they just they just turned up. No, never met them before, um, and we didn't. What we didn't realise that one of them was actually live streaming his video, and it must have been picked up by a lefty or something. And um, then suddenly it's far right mob, you know, masked mob storm bookshop, you know. I mean, the only person with a mask on was this Trump guy. 
But um, yeah, so once I remember seeing it in the papers, um, uh, the mm. the book storm the, the bookshop, um, mm. and almost immediately after that, the dismantling of Made Britain Great Again happened. Mm. So I mean, it's walking through the bookshop. Because you just mentioned there about the books, you said that you see some books and they're disgusting. So I, I've I've seen the video myself, and I know from from looking at it, there was like an anti-Jewish book in there. There was yeah. pro IRA books. Yeah. Um, also, was there? I remember Luke mentioning a book that was written by a Labour MP. Um, they had that book in there, it was like it basically saying mm. that paedophilia was okay. So this is the sort of shit that they had in the bookstore. Yeah. Um, probably why people riled up and wanted to go in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. And it, Luke was just going to go in there. You, do you didn't go in there yourself, though, did you? Um, I went there very briefly. I mean, my plan was just to go in there, go Trump, Trump, Trump. Then we were all supposed to like go out. You know, that was the end of the video. But then mm. a couple of third party people we don't know started getting a bit excited. You know, and then they knew some was being live streamed, and they just. Um, I wasn't in the shop at this point. I was literally in there for thirty seconds. Um, but from what I've seen on the video after. Um, they're going around and saying probably uh, unfair things to the shop owner, which, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. But these are youngsters, though, who are excited. Oh, like, burns down, you don't yeah, yeah. stuff exactly. like that. You know, just general stuff you would say to a communist. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. And then, of course, there was this Tommy Robin uh, <laughs> sign in there, um, TR sign um, from the um, Hope Not Hate produced. And... Um, the only thing that was damaged was that, which they shouldn't have done, but it was that one sign that they ripped in half, which they shouldn't have done, but that was the only thing damaged. But of course, you read in all the papers, it was like, well, you know, they burnt the shop down, they nuked it or whatever. But, you know, again, it was just more evidence to me of how much the mainstream media lie, though, is a complete fabrication. But, I mean, after that... Um, Things well, obviously, because of Luke and myself were in UKIP, we got suspended pending investigation. Um, and of course, we knew we had done nothing wrong, so we had nothing to fear, really. But um, kind of after that, it, um, I don't know, it just kind of fizzled off, really. So, tell us a little bit more about that. So, after that happened, um, mm. it's all in the papers, it's all over the mainstream media. Make Britain Great Again have stormed this communist bookstore. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think I read some of the, the tore up books that never happened. You can see the video online, it's still available. Um, yeah. A signed this torn. Um, and after this, you both get suspended. So you're suspended, Luke's suspended. Um, yeah. I think um, Elizabeth Jones, who was an NEC member, she was there. I don't know if she had any um, issues with it or whatnot. I remember there being it just blowing up out of proportion. It was. Um, it was slow news day. We're talking about in like the middle of August. Everyone's a holiday. There's nothing to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, you've got anything to do with UKIP. The media are going to straightway attack us. We know, you know, the way we've been called racist and all this rubbish over years. Anything to do with UKIP. Oh, he's, you know, a racist. Um, so it was the perfect opportunity for the press to sell papers. But, you know, no police were called out or anything. No one arrived. There's nothing after because nothing happens. But then, of course, all the lefties, they'll just take any scrap of anything to discredit, like UKIP or anyone um, who they perceive to be far right, which is absolutely... So is any, any police investigation at all where police involved or...? No, uh, they never showed up. Not interested. Because oh. nothing happens, you know? But it was just one of those unfortunate things that were unforeseeable. I mean, you cannot control the people around you, you know? Yeah. Luke and myself can like behave ourselves, but when you got these um like these, I suppose, you know, hardcore fans who were who were riled up after having a, a pint or two down the pub, and then, you know, they enter that sort of arena, they know that they they're on live stream, then you know, it's just a recipe for disaster. I think at this point, um Luke was trying to tap into the old football fan um mm. as well. Cause I remember seeing him with with his mate brain great cap on, then he started donning um like a bomber jacket um, <laughs> with a uh, uh, football school. So I think you picked up a few um, undesirables from <laughs> the football team. 
here and there, but you know, um, as I said, you know, things happen, and, and it wasn't wasn't a major incident mm-hmm. um, blown out of proportion. So, is this when tension started happening between you and you and Luke? I mean, what what happened there? Because you have both been suspended now, and I know Luke he was trying yeah. to get back into the party, and he wasn't. They weren't having a bar of it. Um, yeah, you know, he attacking. Gerard Batten online, you know, and you guys were all speaking together at um, rallies and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. After this incident, it all went pear shaped. So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it, it, it did start to go downhill um, then, uh, you know, because uh, obviously we were waiting to see, um, well, the UKIP investigations, we couldn't really do a lot, to be honest, um, with our hands tied at the time. But then we had our hearing and then. Um, um obviously i was cleared because i didn't do anything um um i don't know i won't i wasn't in luke's hearing so i don't know what happens but um very soon after really luke didn't really he kind of stepped out the limelight a bit really um and i don't really know why um and then obviously the next thing that happened was um over in france we had the gilets jaunes start up um so I started um, a Yellow Vest movement in the UK. Again, um, you know, who, it may not have always attracted the people that you'd want there, I suppose is the only fair thing to say. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the thing is, what I've always thought about this, if we didn't start the Yellow Vest movement, then the lefties would have done. That was the thing. But I started it mainly in the UK because in France they're anti-EU. So I thought this is something that we've got to get going in the UK because our very sovereignty is at stake here. You know, if we we allow them to to grab hold of this and try and overturn Brexit, well, there's no coming back whatsoever. So, so Luke, this is a conflict of interest that you know you. you Luke thought it was a lefty outfit, and it wasn't, you know, I don't believe it ever was. It was more against the establishment, and that's why I thought it's something very important um, to start getting a handle on. Um, but then later on, as we saw, there was probably um, maybe some other people getting involved who you particularly want, wouldn't want involved, but you just can't help these things because nobody owns the yellow vest. It's the people. Um, so a lot of tensions drew then really as well, which was a real shame because my heart was in the right place and um, I don't think you appreciated that really. Well, so this is when the, the, the fallout between you two sort of started happening and you could start going your, your separate way, so to speak. Mm. Um, so what was the straw that broke the camel's back then, Martin? I mean... Well, why do you both stop? I mean, like you said, you both be suspended. You're saying you're going to start this yellow vest movement. He's mm-hmm. saying to you, "Lefty socialist um, thing to do." Da, 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 da. Um, so what happens then? What, what happens now? Um, he uh, he gave me an ultimatum, really, um, uh, which I didn't think at the time, you know, was was the right thing because I, I was obviously. But the whole point why I got involved with all of this initially was because I wanted to see Brexit delivered. Because if we didn't have that, then we had nothing because our democracy would be dead and everything. So there was more of an ultimatum there, I suppose. Um, but I had to stick to my guns on this one because I felt it was the right thing to do. Um, and then it kind of tapered off from then, really. He, um, and he eventually um, just broke contact with me, which was quite upsetting, really, because, you know, we've been a lot through a lot together we stuck our necks out the lines and things like that so yeah it was you know and he we become quite close and he you know such you know i i trusted him but i just don't know if he felt the same about me sometimes but you know like i said my main objective was just to get brexit over the line at the time and um and that's for me what would have made britain great again if we saw this because it was our sovereignty back and so basically after that, we kind of broke contact, uh, contact and we haven't spoken at all since, which is really, really sad. You know, there's no closure oh, for me either. How long has that been then? Because the, 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 the bookstore um, thing happened, when, when was the bookstore thing? It was in two, late 2018? Yeah, it must be, it must be a good yeah, year and a half ago now, something like that. But um, yeah, so it was kind of really... 
um, a bit after that. But it was it was an unfortunate incident, really, because you know neither of us um, had any control over the situation, and so it was an unfair way, really, for anything to to take down from that. Um, you know, I, I and who knows, maybe in the future. Maybe now we've had a bit of a hiatus. Maybe it's time to come back again. I don't know. But, you know, the door's always open. And now, like I said, Brexit seems to be being delivered. There's a lot of other things that we need to do to make Britain great again. So the job's not finished, really. Uh, well, from the replies I got from, from Luke, um, I hope he's okay and he's doing well. He seems to have taken this all a bit bit hard. Um all I can say. Um, just hope he, he's doing well. So there was a there was um, a death of someone a member in, in within the movement as well, wasn't there? Because he spoke mm. about it as well. Very sad. Uh, I think he's a bit bit cut up by it all, and you know, and I think the whole UKIP thing for him as well was just. Um, I mean, once he got suspended from there, it was just mm. all from there, wasn't it? For, for both of you. Um, mm. I remember when. So basically, there was. Um, the manifesto launch, um, I believe it was, or, or whatever, um, general election coming up. Um, and then there's Carl Benjamin, um, mm-hmm. Argon of a CAD, known by his YouTube um, name, with Gerald Batten, and they're in a press conference. Mm-hmm. And then one of the um, journalists gets the name wrong, I think probably referring to, to Luke or whatever, and he says your name, Martin, mm-hmm. and then... And then, what, so what, what happened? What's the story behind that? Because we well, actually I'll apologize to you after. And well, and that's an interesting thing because I'll be honest, um, Carl Benjamin, our con a sag, sag, well, oh, I never heard of him before this, you know, I'll be honest. And people, you know, I am, I'm not a youngster or anything anymore, so I'd never heard of this, but um, um, interestingly, he lives in the same town as me, Swindon, so um. He started to get involved with UKIP and come to like a meeting. Um, and so, um, and it just happened to be, yeah, um, in my in my neck of the woods, I suppose. Um, and then we had all this controversy um, with Carl Benjamin as well, um, because um, Luke, you know what Luke's like, very meticulous and quite right to be. He, he dug up um, some of Carl's history um, and saw some, you know, very, very unsavory things that he was he was quite right to um to flag up. Um because I think Carl at the time also wanted to run as an MEP in the EU elections. Um so Luke was rightly to be concerned that um he UKIP may have been bending too far into one direction uh, when they were rubbing shoulders of other people as well. Um and you have to look at the long term, and that is not what was going to get us out of the EU at the time. So mm-hmm. Luke um, actually had a spat with um, Carl Benjamin as well, I think. Um, they were shooting YouTube videos at each other. And I thought Carl's quite unkind to him, really, um, in, in some regard. But Luke, you know, he stuck to his principles, you know, and there's people he would not share a stage with um, on certain occasions because of affiliations with with groups that were were unsavory and he was quite right to do that um so luke pointed out this um issue with um carl benjamin but i think ukip at the time they were too interested in his social media following rather than um anything else because i think carl's you know he's got over a million followers or something um but that doesn't equate to votes. And um, what UKIP didn't realise is a lot of these followers are like based out in the United States and things. Um, so it was, it was a huge error, huge, huge error by Gerard Batten and UKIP there. And Luke was right to be concerned about it. But then that dispatch happened and the journalist has brought this up during the manifesto, yeah. I think it was a manifesto launch. Um, and then he's brought your name up instead yeah. of Luke. Is that, is that what happened? And then, and then... Much to my surprise, um, this was when um, we had the EU elections back in uh, May last year. And of course, you keep, you think the party of Brexit, but um, obviously the Brexit party come along. Um, and the question went um, to Carl um, saying that members of your own branch don't want you um, to stand your branch of Swindon because the chairman, the Swindon chairman, you know, to be fair to him, he wanted to wash his hands of him because of these unsavoury comments he had made. 
you know, things about like rape. I mean, you, there's just some things you don't joke about. You really don't joke about it. And you can't take someone seriously. You um, who would make um, I, um, comments, you know, in rape in any capacity. I know Jess Phillips mocked about um, male mental health, which is absolutely disgusting, but two wrongs don't make a right. So um, in this occasion, um, Carl thought it was actually me that um, who um, wanted um, him not to run when it, at the time the chairman made the comments. So I was called out there. Um, and um, but, you know, he was right. We couldn't have someone run like that. So it's quite a surprise, really, of the whole incident. And then you subsequently, you left the party after that um, and moved on to the Brexit party. Mm. Um, and again, while this is going on, there's still, after that comment that was made, it was obviously mm. Luke that had done this, this um, had this spat with him, but there was still no communication with Luke with this. Group. Not, I just, just going back quickly to say one thing, um, I was actually the Wiltshire chairman of UKIP um, before, um, before I left the party, and I had lots of complaints about this one in particular, and I did my rightful duty to report this at the top, but it was completely ignored. So I was, I was quite horrified by that. So then, you know, I knew it come round to um, um, the EU elections. And I thought, well, we've got to back the Brexit party because UKIP are all over the place at the moment. We got If we back the Brexit party, there's one clear goal. Um, Nigel done a great job getting the party going. So it was a no-brainer, really. I had to support it. Um, so and well, I it just, whilst all this is going on, what, what happened with made for great again is it that is Luke still keeping things active is he still organizing protests is he still got the online presence with the videos is well Luke went completely off the radar you know and um there were times over that period I wondered if he was if he was still in this country or anything because he just completely vanished and I was actually quite concerned for his welfare you know he was a good friend and um, it's really horrible to see the way things ended like that. But I still regard him as a friend, you know. He's met on my family, you know, he's been over and stuff. Um, you know, he's a brother, you know, he's a, he's a really good man. And so I was quite concerned about him. Um, so to hear um, recently when yourself mentioned, that, um, you know, you've been in contact with him, I was really delighted about that because, you know, I, I was quite concerned about him because he, he completely dropped off the radar. I thought I'd try and get him on because it's only right, do you know what I mean? Um, but I think he declined. He, he, um, he was very low with when he started talking about Meghan Markle and all other stuff and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm a bit, bit worried from both of you. I do hope he's okay. Um, mm -hmm. so now, did, after all this has happened, um, you know, you then get a write-up in um, Hope Not Hate on their website. They do a <laughs> write-up in gold you must feel as flash as a rat with gold tooth <laughs> <laughs> honestly uh, someone would probably think i paid them to write this <laughs> it is. Yeah, so let's have a read read us out what, what they said have you, have you got it there to read up i have yeah um basically we had the the election this was before the elections when i was running a local election um they said costello is the second in command of oddball Trump supporting group Make Britain Great Again. During this time at MBGA, he could be found screaming, round up all illegal immigrants and get them out of here. I stand by that. I stand by that. But then, yeah, it goes on to say, obviously, they're trying to attack me. Costello's best known, however, for being a part of an idiotic incident in August 2018, in which he and 11 others entered the left-wing bookshop bookmarks in London, instructed by MBGA leader Luke Nash-Jones to make a right nuisance. In the resulting debacle, shop staff were abused. Well, there was only one shop bloke there and a sign was ripped up, um, which was, yeah, I wasn't there then. I've just seen it on the video. But um, and Luke was quite right when he condemned the action of third parties. Um, and then it went on, on the, the Basically, the article then goes on to say that um, I run the UKIP's Facebook page, which is a load of rubbish. And apparently I've shared material from a fascist YouTube account promoted by the New Zealand killer. I mean, just what all is this, honestly? And then they mention about the yellow vest as well in the article, um, when apparently I... Uh, 
Yellowverse UK, yeah? Yellowverse UK members took part in the harassment of Anna Subri. I mean, I do remember this, you know, this going on um, when they called Anna Subri a Nazi. Um, probably, you know, they may have thought that because she doesn't like democracy, but to suggest I was anything to do with it is complete fabrication. You know, but this is hope, not hate we're talking about, though. And they spread no hope and they got lots of hate, as we know. They are a joke. They really are. I mean, some of them, guys, some of them are, are the worst. I've seen them at um, protests and you know, I, I've had to deal with them in, in, in my job and stuff like that. And protesters have turned up and, you know, they're real nasty people, really nasty people. Mm. Uh, Seriously, um, they are. They're the ones that want all the trouble, though. It is probably those that turned up, like to those rallies, um, of those we can't mention, just to cause trouble, then blame us on the far right. But there is yes. no far right in this country, really, or very few. You're talking about, or what? What have you defined as far right? The biggest problem was the left. You know, they're the extremists. They're the ones that are causing all the trouble and the hate and all that. But as usual, these sort of people try to turn it around to the likes of us. So we're just trying to do good things all the time. You know, it's ridiculous. Some some people just have concerns. There's nothing to do with hate. Um, hmm. Do you think? Do you, so do you, do you think? Like you said the doors always open. Do you think you could ever see yourself getting back involved with Luke and restarting up, make Britain great again? Or do you think it's a it's a done deal now? It's it's difficult, difficult to say. I mean, I think the potential is there um there's there's still a lot of work to do and we were on the right track you know you know the mistakes may have been made but the bottom line is though our hearts are in the right place so you know if there's a possibility in the future who knows is is the answer really um i don't think the job's done at all um and we've still got so many issues in society that we're dealing with and we know what they are you know some that we can't talk about but um, on the whole, we just want to make Britain great again, I suppose. So you never know. Right. Well, that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks for uh, coming on. That's uh, Martin Costello, the former deputy leader of Make Britain Great Again. <laughs> um, if you follow Make Britain Great Again, uh, please make sure you check out Martin Costello's uh, new page. It's the UK Universe. And we'll leave uh, the handles. Check out the handles below. Um, I'll leave some links to some of your stuff so um, you can follow up. Um, thanks for watching and um, thanks for your time, Martin. Thank you. Pleasure as always. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, guys.